kinds of trouble the kinds of situations that you see people go through while they smile you cannot imagine the kind of situation medical reports that are death sentences financial situations demonic situations all kinds of troubles and most times believers just box this in hope that one day God will step in can I tell you my Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God even though they are the people of God there is a rest they have refused to enter it says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did that means they were given a chance to enter that rest but through unbelief they could not enter that rest. It says to labor so that we'll enter that rest. Are we blessed? Yes. Encounter with the power of God. You need the power of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. And you see, when we talk about the power of God, the power of God is literally God's ability to produce his dimension of results in a man the power of god is god's ability not his kind of ability the very ability of god working in a man to produce results that only god can produce can i tell you this there are certain results in this earth realm that men unassisted cannot produce if it is the lord's doing the bible says it is marvelous there is a way you can do business that people know that this is just intellectual argument. This is, this is just a human being stretching his creativity. There is a way you can do ministry. There is a way you can live your life. But when that engracing of the spirit comes upon you, like we discussed in the morning, your life becomes supernatural by every standard. How in the world do you look at a sick person someone who has been diagnosed for 10 years say and with one word in the name of jesus be healed and that person will check and the pain is gone no it takes more than intelligent communication behind those words there is the power of god the power of god the power of god ladies and gentlemen i introduce you tonight to the power of God to not only heal the power of God to not only save can I tell you this the power of God is akin to light I shared this while we were having service if a room is left dark for 20 years if a room is left dark for 10 years if a room is left dark for one week if a room is left dark for one hour, how long does it take when you switch on the light for the room to be illuminated? Does it matter that the room has been dark for 20 years? This is how the power of God works. It doesn't matter how long the challenge has been there. The light will not respect the longevity of the darkness. At the instance the light comes, the darkness goes. So do not be surprised that in a moment you will find out that the debt that would have taken five years for you to pay that whilst you are in service God is already moving by his power please sit down let me tell you three three very important information about the power of God number one the power of God is creative the power of God creates. To create means to make a reality that did not exist to appear. The power of God is creative. It can create. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. That means it is possible for me to have and to carry something now that does not exist around my life the power of God is creative number two the power of God is corrective it can correct any anomaly my goodness that when the power of God comes 
you see please look up the power of god functions like medicine like a drug if say for instance a gentleman is suffering from say malaria or headache or whatever it is does he put the drug on his head does he put the drug on his leg maybe not necessarily he will swallow that drug he does not have to tell the drug where to go to you just swallow it designed in the drug the drug knows where to go and correct that problem is that true now watch this when you swallow that drug you keep looking where you will know what the drug is doing by the correction that begins to happen that's how the word of god functions when it is introduced to your life your family your destiny you just leave the power of god it will go around your life checking for what part of your life is not like the garden of eden listen to me and it does not stop until it corrects so when the power of god comes to your life it can literally turn your life to the direction that is right the power of god does not just create it can correct apostle i have a medical report here that i have a situation that cannot be corrected medically let the power of god do that job it can correct are we together when you understand the creative dimension of the word of god it will conquer fear and doubt because for most people because we we are accustomed to the scientific realm the physical realm the question like mary is how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man it was a legitimate question the angel's answer is my answer to you the power of the highest shall overshadow you so i'm seated right here with a health condition apostle are you saying in a moment that that medical report that blood condition will leave question please look at me the bible says even the old earth and the old heaven will pass away what is in your body that cannot pass away if the earth itself can pass away hallelujah i am i am a recipient of the power of god not just a custodian of it i have been i have been blessed i know what the power of god can do in the life of an individual please hear me whenever you find out that there is a mountain that stands before you and you've exhausted everything you know to do i want you to step back and allow the power of god the power of god is able to create the power of God is able to correct apostle where will this breakthrough come from as I'm seated here now I wish I knew who would help me don't worry the Word of God has that assignment it is able to bring that possibility into your life please I want you to believe everything that I'm saying because that is what will happen to you shortly <laughs> hallelujah and you see the thing about the power of god is that you do not have to debate the presence or the absence of it the evidences will be clear whether it is there or not as simple and as honest as that it is impossible to be too hungry and not know it is impossible to be too full and not know it is impossible to be heavily pregnant and not know under normal circumstances anything you have in a lavish dimension you must know many of you have been anointed but it's like you are not anointed god wants to step you to a level where even demons and devils will know that an engracing from heaven has come upon your life tonight if you're in agreement with me say amen, amen. power to change situations power to provide supernatural solutions to the needs of man the power of god is not just limited to healings and deliverances you must understand this the power of god also engraces you to provide all kinds of supernatural solutions the third thing about the power of god that i want you to know 
is that the power of God brings ease to the life of a man believe me the power of God brings ease to the life of a man one time I don't know what led me to that 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 channel that page on the on the internet on YouTube I was watching and I was watching how these metals crush and recycle cars so they just throw something and the metal will crush it but then they threw one metal that was made of steel and the machine just stopped it couldn't crush it couldn't crush it and I said wow I'm learning something here then they took it to a bigger machine and as soon as they dropped it there it squeezed that metal like orange I said that's it so the possibilities in our lives are not just based on the love of God the possibilities in our lives are based on the kind and the dimension of power that is at work in you are we together now let me tell you very quickly how the power of God works and then we begin to pray the power of God works like money I like to use money for an example because I have learned by experience that people really understand it when you use money <laughs> hallelujah so if I have say a thousand naira I have money a thousand naira may be able to buy this why because this is still within the range of that price but a thousand naira may not be able to buy a vehicle are we together now so if the challenge in front of me is to buy water I am safe because a thousand naira can attend to that need but if the challenge is now to buy a vehicle I will need to have multiples of what I am holding so he says grace and peace be multiplied because listen carefully there are challenges that you may confront that the level of power you carry may not be able to solve this is a very powerful teaching listen do you know as a man of God I can have someone say having headache whatever pain a financial problem whatever demonic oppression and in the name of Jesus I can pray for that person can I be honest with you the only problems in that man's life that will be solved through that prayer and that ministration would be the problems that are under the kind of grace I carry so it is possible that out of the 10 challenges he has only two will be solved he may fall down as usual and stand up but only two because that is on the spiritual currency that is how far I could go in helping him now you will understand Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth it's not just that he was anointed look at the extent he was anointed so that whatever problem you had that grace was sufficient to solve it this is also the reason why even though he has anointed us we continue to contend for deeper and greater levels of power why because as the problems of men continue to multiply as the arsenals of darkness come up with all kinds of problems we must have the sufficient engracing to solve every problem that we confront the degree to which you can solve the problems of men is the degree to which you are a blessing and if it is true that the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed then we must continue to contend why do i have to pray and contend for greater levels of power when i am already seeing a measure because you see there are some things that that level cannot do the disciples came and asked jesus and said why couldn't we do this and jesus told them he said this kind goeth not by, but by prayer and fasting the prayer and fasting does something to you that increases your capacity to respond to that situation are we together do you know I look back at my life and I am surprised today at how certain things happened cheaply that were so difficult in time past even though I was anointed even though I had the power of God but I did not understand that the needs of men can only attend to the level of power you've heard me say every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it it is possible to stay around struggling over a situation and to make God look powerless in the face of that situation and someone will come with a higher level of grace and not even pray any prayer just bring that presence and you find that problem just melt just like that 
with all humility, I look at some of the situations that God has used me to solve in the life of people today. Did you know that these were the same situations that years ago I would struggle over and wonder what, what is wrong? Is it that I'm not anointed? Is it that I'm not using the name of Jesus? The difference was growth and increase. This is why he can measure a thousand cubits even though you are the river. Just because you are the river does not mean that you have everything. Then he measured a thousand cubits. I sense that there are some of us who are here tonight. It is time for that thousand cubits to be measured for you because you see the level God is taking you to. Can I tell you how God honors you? God honors you by exposing you to people who have greater levels of problems so that with the greater anointing when you are able to solve their problems, then your honor is greater. Is someone learning tonight our world today does not ignore the reality of power at work in a man now it is the desperation for power is so strong that whether it is diabolic power it is whatever power let it just be power that works people who want to benefit from it first before they verify and ask for forgiveness if necessary but in the meantime they don't have that time for any discussion. The moment they see anything that carries a semblance of power to provide results, they will run. So whilst we are giving all kinds of explanations in the church and saying, don't go to herbalists, don't go to all kinds of diabolic people, if we do not rise and contend for superior levels of power in this end time, we will be surprised how people will leave the church wall and immediately after our beautiful speaking, they have heard, but they want to see in some other place. Are we together? One more time, shout power. power. It takes power to dislodge the arsenals of darkness that plague our children, that plague our lives, that plague our destinies, all kinds of demonic things. I marvel at the skills that Satan has employed so far in, in bringing troubles to people's lives. As I interact with people and as I talk with people, sometimes I, I get so emotional, I cannot imagine how determined Satan is to keep people in a way that never brings glory to God. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit this conference is called encounter encounter is more than a discussion it's an experience so when jesus is ready to use a man the way he prepares that man is to submit that man through seasons of dealings dealings that prune you dealings that break you listen carefully when god calls you he does not empower you anointing is not what follows calls when god calls you he does not call you to ministry he calls you to himself and it is a season of uncomfortable dealing and breaking but when you pass through that season with him and he's ready to send you he does not only send you with a message he sends you with the backing of heaven the backing of heaven and when you stand and deliver that message in truth that backing is ready to speak for you to bring healings and to validate number one that jesus is lord number two that you are truly sent the anointing I've taught you that is, is a system of legitimization. That means if you claim you came from God with a message from God, then the people will want to hear and to see. And the assignment of that anointing is to prove to men, among other reasons, that you are not an illegitimate communicator of the counsel of God. So when you speak and God backs you, it's his signature upon your life and within that environment, I sent him. Are we together? 
because some of you will leave this meeting tonight in a hurry and you will get back home and stand and say okay when Saul left his father's house he could not do much but now Saul has returned as a prophet Saul is not just returning as one who is looking for the father's donkey so the encounter is twofold number one to experience the grace that is so lavishly given but number two that you not only experience it you become a conduit of that grace and then in addition to all of the other parts of the conference down till sunday you will now know that i'm a career of higher grace and in case you are saying apostle i've i think i'm anointed the question is how many supernatural solutions has that level of anointing brought to men and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins and he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river overflowing and the bible says everywhere the river went to the fish that was there came back to life by reason of that overflowing anointing i also sense that tonight there are many of you who there will be a restoration of graces and dimensions dimensions in the spirit you once walked in but for some reason that visionary experience you used to have just seems to have faded away that that intuitiveness that level of favor when you came into this city it was like you were a magnet but now it looks like everything is gone find hope the power of god can restore the power of God can restore. The power of God can restore. My goodness, I already sense such a strong anointing here already. The power of God can restore. Another powerful thing about the power of God before we pray is that the power of God can bring acceleration. This is very this is a, a a very powerful feature of the power of god acceleration when it has to do with acceleration the hand of god can come upon a man and can fast track your life listen if two of us start a journey here we are supposed to run at the same pace whoever goes ahead is the one who arrives first but when the power of god is introduced to the life of a man he can pick you from that level pick you on a flight here's what the bible says they that wait upon the lord they shall renew so this is the business of strength he's talking about are we together now he says they will mount up with wings he's still talking about strength the moment he begins to talk about wings he's talking about speed he's talking about time they will mount up with wings as the eagles they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Elijah ran on barefoot by the power of God. And he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. Someone tonight as you are encountering this power. Listen, it, it, it truly will walk like a dream. As you will see God just push you to levels that you cannot even explain. You just know you are moving by the spirit to dimensions that you cannot explain. Can I tell you this? Do not forbear with evil tonight. Do not forbear with anything that does not name the name of Christ. Do not give excuses. You are going to pray and you will insist that everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God as revealed from scripture, tonight is the night you will wave it a final goodbye. Can you rise up on your feet as we pray in one minute? It's going to be very, very fast so that we don't keep us uh, too long here. But then I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Please lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Pray. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your life. Pray over your destiny. Pray over your health. It's a new season by the Spirit of the Living God. 
Hema shala gaska de berekesh kota baliakata. Shabrande ke parusiata. Following online here in the auditorium, lift your voice and pray. Man of God, you are praying. It's a new season. hallelujah hallelujah now let me say this by the grace of god i want to assure you by the spirit of the living god that god has granted us by the privilege of his grace the wisdom and the word compliancy to dispense the gifts of the spirit within the boundary of scripture you need not fear regardless the extremities of the manifestations by the grace of god we are dealing here with a system that honors god and is consistent with the ways of god so every prophetic word every manifestation of the spirit and every administration of the power of god that will happen here i want you to trust that it will happen within the boundary of scripture find confidence and let your heart be open to receive i say this because i know that many of us may have had all kinds of experiences with the prophetic experiences with the miraculous and chances are that when the power of god is about to dispense be dispensed on this wise there can be that fear we can close our hearts in a bid to escape error in a bid to not get into anything that is extra biblical i want you to know that we love jesus we fear him and he's cultured us and trained us well we came out of the experience the dealing of the spirit it's not just an anointing that came we were taught and we were sent so find confidence that the administration of the power of god as you will be experiencing here will be within the boundary of scripture aimed at revealing jesus and bringing him glory are we together now you pray father let your power touch me let it rest upon my life let it change my life go ahead and pray go ahead and pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord now please listen to me listen to me uh for the sake of space when if for any reason there is a call to bring out those under the anointing may i request that we just maintain the gaps at the edges so that we don't the space here is limited so that we can honor the servants of god just here right now and then we're going to be very very fast on this i'm going to be praying for the sick but right now i just saw light and without shouting without doing anything just bring all the people under the anointing now as the power of god begins to fall on people right now as i'm speaking the power of god and the light of god just from the left to the right i just saw that light right now please bring them the power of god is going to begin to rest on people and this anointing that is coming on people is for restoration this is what i'm seeing in the spirit and there are people here who have been tied down there are people here who the lord is bringing restoration please bring all of them out right now i stretch my hands and i decree and declare may that grace for restoration rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus right to the back it's, it's it's something you can't stand we're talking about the power of god here from the left to the right the extreme of this auditorium please whether you are an usher or not just do well to help anyone under the anointing right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare let there be restoration let there be restoration may that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ please bring them out who is grace I'm hearing a name grace 
who is grace is there anyone with that name i presume that there may be lots of people grace this person i'm talking about you are wearing i'm seeing like white and yellow you are wearing a trouser is there somebody like that you are wearing white and yellow that's what i'm describing who is that i can't see anybody oh i see the lord is saying it's a new season for this lady i don't know who she is but in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a woman five years five years you are yet to have the fruit of the womb you are yet to give birth five years you are on this road god is telling me you are here is there someone like that here just here we have to hurry up for time please if you find her let her come your life is about to change madam run and come to jesus here at house on the rock he's giving you an encounter atmosphere shift now chains be broken please let them come Hearing a name Nike is like a short form of a whole name. Nike, is there someone with such a name? Madam, you are the one. I'm seeing the Lord is saying, number one, I don't know what it is. I hope you're not embarrassed. Can I talk to you? The Lord is shifting something in your body. This is what I'm seeing. Please lay your hand on your stomach. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is telling me that He's bringing you a miracle. This is what I'm. Is this your husband? Sir, can I pray for you, ma? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I do not know you, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare right now that this thing that does not name the name of Christ, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. How long have you been trusting your all? Huh? Your grace. Please bring for me two people that shout loud right now under the anointing. There is such, I just saw light, that fire. This is a very loud shout. I want to pray. Please, I want you to believe. Even if it is 10 minutes, I want you to know that something must rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. I'm seeing this one, two, three, the third row the third row here there are some of you the power of god i i don't know but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this row in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ hallelujah I want to pray for you. Those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I, I asked them to come out. Are they here? I want you to believe in Jesus. Don't worry. Just take your eyes away from whatever medical report. Believe in Jesus. I want to pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. We're going to make this very fast. I just saw that fire come on one of you. And in the name of Jesus, I declare, according to the time of life, please just place your hand on your stomach if you can. Why is she here? She was under the anointing there. Look at me, madam. You believe in Jesus? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I declare, this that I see on you, let it loose now by the power of the Holy Spirit, gone forever, never to return again in the name of jesus and for all of you who are here i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead according to the time of life return with miracle children house on the rock agree with them return with miracle children return with miracle children in the name of jesus christ please quickly return to your seats someone among 
the people who were ministering here to Hila, I just saw the power of God. That's where the choir is. There's one of you. I know that maybe right now, the Lord is saying to that one person that you are stepping into a new season. A new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new season. There are four men of God here. You are in ministry. I just saw a strong anointing resting upon you. Four people. I know that we may pray for other people, but I don't know where the four people are. By the Spirit of God, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, this grace for a new season in ministry. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. My friend, there's a gentleman on suit. This man, lift your hands. I just saw light coming on you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a new season for you. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Shali Tarus Kadima Kashobrata Siata. Who works here with FIRSC? That's Federal Inland. I just saw that name, FIRSC. You are wearing white. No, not this man. You are, it's like you are somewhere there. Is there some, please come. Your life is about to change. Please verify. Is there someone to, where do you, God bless you, sir. Where do you work, sir? FIRSC, yes. how long have you been there? For 10 years now. 10 years. Yes, I want to, because I'm seeing you climb a ladder. It's a new season for you. Can I pray for you? Who works with Indians? I'm seeing a man and I'm seeing Indians. Is there someone like that? You work with it. Oh dear, this. You work with Indians. Come. I want to pray for you sir i'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing like a scepter given to you and the lord is saying is a new season this thing will happen within the next six months the way god will move you it will surprise you you believe what i'm saying and now i, I don't mean to speak against any tribe but what i'm hearing you see when god places when god is determined to lift you whether it's a donkey, whether it's a Cyrus, he will use anyone and anything to lift you. This is what is happening to you. I pray for you by the Spirit of the living God. Joining faith with the servants of God here, I decree and declare. According to the word of the Lord, let it be for you now. In Jesus' name. And for you, my brother, may the Lord help you. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for someone. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I usually would not do this except that God asked me to do it. You are a driver. But I want to pray because you have been seeing yourself starting a business. I want to pray for you. Your life is going to change. This is what you do. It's like you drive. That's what I'm seeing. But you are about to start a business. And the Lord wants me to just pray and speak over your life. If there's someone like that. Uh, I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing a man wearing blue. Complete blue. This is what I'm seeing. Come, don't be embarrassed. This is the house of God. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. My friend, please come. Can I tell you, listen, listen. The house of God is a place of power. God does not just bring successful people. He makes successful people out of the house. Are we together now? Let me use this opportunity to decree already over someone. That in the name of Jesus, whatever level you have seen now, by prophecy, I push you to the next level. Step into a new season. Step into a new season. Step into a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. What do you do, sir? You drive your own private vehicle? Your own private vehicle? Yeah. I do Uber. Okay, no. Uber. You two, same thing. And this man? 
Not my own, sir. But you're driving someone's own. Where are you from? I'm from Adam Austin, sir. Mm. I want to pray for you. Look at me. I'm seeing the Lord use agriculture to lift you in a way that will surprise you. This man, I don't know you from anywhere, but God is connecting you. Agriculture is what I see God using to honor and bless you and to lift you. And I stretch my hands, my friend. May the power that makes this happen, let it rest upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sirs, by the Spirit of the living God. I'm seeing according to that vision, you starting a business. May the grace that makes things work, in the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. All of you, in the name of Jesus, within months, you will return with tearsome testimonies. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, I want to pray, I believe in speed. There truly is a grace for speed. Destiny is a function of time. And whatever impedes you has taken a portion of your destiny. Is it alright if I minister that grace upon you? Truly, there is a grace for speed. Speed of accomplishment. I want to pray for you. Now, every time I pray this, here's what I want you to do. Please, I want you to help those who will begin to run by the Spirit so that we don't have any injuries. The power of God will rest on people and literally, they will find themselves running by the Spirit. The hand of God is resting upon them. I don't know, I don't have any personal relationship with this woman who ministered. But madam, I don't know what it is that you have to do with United Kingdom. Because I'm, I, just, I just had a vision and I saw you in, in UK. And I don't know what this is. Maybe a program you are going or something God is doing for you and your husband. Is it alright if I just speak over you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that is in UK that is for you. In the name of Jesus, let it look for you until it enters your hand. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree this and I declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray that grace for speed. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I am anointed with fresh oil. Ah. My head, you are exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I stretch my hands right now everyone here who has suffered any kind of delay there is a strong anointing coming on you right now at the count of three one two my god help them three take that grace take that grace speed all over the building i decree and declare by the power of the holy ghost speed in ministry speed in business speed in your life May the hand of the Lord rest upon you. I release you by the prophetic. Run like Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahab. Down to Jesus. Run like Elijah. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Supernatural speed over your life. Supernatural speed over your destiny. Many of you will stand to testify here that at this conference, the Lord shifted you to, to seasons and realms beyond your imagination. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you the Bible says wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name and it says that name is above every other name that at the mention of that name every knee shall bow I want to rebuke every wind that has been causing the storm to rage for you 
there are spirits that are back of the tragedies in the lives of men there are spirits that are back sir can i pray for you this man i don't know who you are but i just saw light coming on you and i want to pray for you because the lord is taking you to a level beyond your imagination i stretch my hands towards you sir and i declare let this anointing rest upon you let it be a new season for you now in the name of jesus christ and that everything that does not name the name of christ in your life let it give way right now i want to pray for you listen to me paul was speaking to the church in thessalonica and he said i desire to come to you again even i paul once and again but satan hindered us satan can use manifestations of spirits systems and structures to block people from making progress i want to declare against any spirit that is not of the christ and the moment i pray please anyone who is manifesting here you just help them so they don't injure themselves are we together now my god Hallelujah. 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 spirit that is not of the Christ tormenting lives and destinies tying down the glory of people I want to pray for you and at the count of three I want you to shout that name that is above every other name exalted above every name every throne every dominion and hear me at that shout if God be God then everything that has held you down, even if it is Jericho, are you ready now? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I command every spirit, every yoke of darkness, release those people now in the name of Jesus. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives, according to scripture, shall be delivered. I'm still praying. Some of you are standing here for your families, not just for yourself. If there is any one of your family members under any kind of yoke of captivity, because you are here at this conference, I bring life to them now. Victory to them now. Freedom to them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. You work in Access Bank. I just saw that logo. Access Bank. I want to pray for the sick now. But the Lord just gave me this word. Gentlemen, you work in Access Bank. In fact, it's like you came from the bank to this place. You are wearing a, you are wearing it. Uh, okay, come. But I'm seeing in my vision, it's like blue. It's a light blue. But you come. But this, where, okay. you work in Access Bank? Please come. Both of you, all of you. I'm seeing four people. This is what I'm seeing. One, two, three. But I'm seeing a fourth person again. 
Access Bank, sir. God bless you. Can I pray for you, sirs? Listen, let me tell you this. Every gift and every grace that God gives a man is not for that man. It's for the body of Christ. I can assure you that the days of superstar Christianity is over. We are here as vessels revealing Jesus, joining our hands as the body of Christ to exalt Jesus and show the world that he's alive. This is what this is all about. This is not about Joshua Selman. This is not about some man of God. Thank God for the gift. But I can tell you we are only ushers. We direct men to Jesus to help them know that he's alive. Are we together? If you ever find yourself being mightily and marvelously used by God, let me encourage you. Do not be ashamed to let the nations know that your assignment is to project Jesus. It is only when he is lifted up that he draws men to himself. Are we blessed? I want to pray for you, sir. How long have you been in Access Bank? Will you believe what I'll tell you? Yes, sir. That your time here is almost coming to an end? Yes, sir. But you've seen it. Yes. It's not something I'm just saying. Yes. You've seen it. Yes. And that the Lord is going to lift you. Yes. You are in Abuja here. Yes. What is taking you to Lagos? Because I'm seeing you go to Lagos. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, my brothers, I agree with you. Standing on the grace of your pastor, I decree and declare. A strong anointing is coming on you, my brother. This man I prophesy to. And in the name of Jesus, God is going to connect you to a very wealthy man. And that man will be used by God to change your life. May that grace rest on you. So let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, sirs, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. May the Lord show you favor. May the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, you will go and prosper. You will go and experience increase. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the cry of a baby. And it's a baby boy. And the Lord is telling me there is a family. You've had a child, but you are trusting God for a boy. I don't know who that person is. And you are in, you are in front. Where are you coming from, madam? Is that true? I, I, I hope you're not embarrassed. Can I pray for you? You believe in miracles? Yes, sir. Madam, you're a member of this church? No, sir. Now, when, no matter where you are, let, do me a favor. When the boy comes, come and stand here and testify. <laughs> sorry, so sorry. I hope it's not you. My dear, you're trusting God for this miracle? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That is it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I pray for you. Where is your husband? I want to pray for you. There is a marvelous financial miracle. This be even beyond this prayer that I'm praying that is coming for you and your husband. But I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. A strong anointing is coming upon you now. And in the name of Jesus, this grace, this grace is what will make this prophetic word come to pass. I release that grace upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. And for my sister here, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I decree and declare according to the word of the Lord and for the glory of the King. Let this be for you. In Jesus' name. Did I pray for you, sir? I can't even remember why he's out. FIRS, I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. How long have you worked there? Ten years. Huh? Ten years. Ago. Ten years. And seeing you have something to do with politics or a politician. What? Huh? What, do you, what else do you do? That's all you do. I want you, do not fight it. When that drive for politics comes, it's in your destiny. God has shown you this thing already. Even before you started working, I release that grace upon you now. May the grace that makes this happen. Listen, let me tell you this. The church, God has given the church and he has given vessels in the church certain graces called a kingmaker anointing. A kingmaker never sits on that throne himself, but he can enthrone and dethrone. 
the church is actively part of government are we together yes just close to the people sitting at the front here i'm seeing the power of god come on one person um just this like this right there this row i don't know why but it's just a miracle i'm going to pray for the sick right now but i stretch my hands in the name of jesus christ may that strong anointing rest upon you supernaturally let it shift you to a new season by the power of the holy ghost in jesus name in the name of jesus christ can i just take out five minutes to pray for the sick my sincere apologies i know that there are people who have come here trusting god for healing do you believe in healing miracles please lay your hands here's what i want you to do for me i've been given a bit of time but i will not abuse that that privilege so we'll still walk within the boundary of the time given but here's what i want you to do i'm going to pray a simple prayer in the name of jesus remember my illustration about light and darkness because that light is about to come up right now are we together and i'm going to pray for you in mass the power of god is coming on one person with hepatitis now the power of god i'm going to pray for everyone but that one person you will be healed right now right at the back that's what i'm saying is there someone like that right at the back you are healed now of hepatitis right there in the name of jesus now i'm going to pray for you and as soon as i pray for you i want you to please check yourself we're not pretending this is no show this is the power of god i want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened let's have even if, it, even if it's just one or two testimonies of the marvelous hand of god and then i just speak over your life and we're done is that fine please lay your hands very quickly i want to pray for you i believe in miracles i truly believe in miracles blood conditions negative medical reports you are here working miracles i worship you i worship you you are here power of Jesus is moving across this place now now two things will happen and the healing power of Jesus will begin to touch people two people are going to start running out by the anointing please hold them wherever they are honestly I don't know why God does these things sometimes but they are just signs and wonders when that happens the healing power of Jesus will begin to move two people literally the power of God will come upon them that's one there now I can pray how God does these things and why he does it sometimes there are signs and wonders there is one more person right now the power of God literally the person will start running please just hold the person so he doesn't injure himself and then I begin to <laughs> it's very funny how these things work sometimes now I'm ready to pray hallelujah please lay your hands in the name of jesus christ please shout a believing amen. amen in the name of jesus christ amen. i rebuke every spirit that is back of every infirmity every disease i command by the power that raised christ from the dead be gone now in the name of jesus and every sickness every infirmity in the name of jesus the christ of god be healed now blood conditions be healed now my god my god my god such a wave of glory the anointing is just sweeping across the length and the breadth of this place healing is coming i'm seeing the lord heal lungs 
lumps like lumps breast lumps be healed right now be healed right now help them please be healed my god be healed right now there's someone having severe pain around the lower back area severe pain in fact i'm literally feeling that pain on my own back i decree and declare right now be healed in jesus name madam the woman laying her hands on her head i just saw oil keep that hand on your head i saw oil coming on you and the lord is saying this infirmity goes now i stretch my hands be healed now be healed now the power of god is touching you right where you are be healed now in the name of jesus headache migraine headache goes now in the name of jesus christ hear me anyone having any malignant growth or any kind of growth whatsoever we command that growth to dissolve from your body now cancer be healed in the name of jesus there's someone god is healing you you don't have to come out but what we know as impotency the lord is healing someone of that condition right now in the name of jesus christ there's someone you have breathing problems you really cannot breathe like breathe normally the power of god is touching you a miracle is happening to you right now right now right now a miracle is happening please help her help her help her just hold her she's coming out by the anointing so she doesn't fall be healed now in the name of jesus christ peptic ulcer be healed in the name of jesus now the lord is showing me i'm seeing someone there is it looks like a boil but it comes out in a particular part of your body you keep treating it and treating it and it keeps coming again the power of god is touching you right where you are in the name of jesus christ someone you came here with severe pain i'm seeing pain around your shoulder here you are at the back the power of god has touched you in the name of jesus every other situation be healed right now be healed right now in fact there's someone you are having um i don't know what this is called it's it's not yes your throat like tonsillitis severe pain you almost cannot swallow as soon as i'm done praying you check yourself that devil leaves your throat right now someone your left eye your left eye seems you don't see very clearly with your left eye the power of god is coming upon you now and i declare that that blood vision is is perfected now 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 in the name of jesus christ every blind eye be open whether partial or total blindness be healed now hear me if there is anyone here who cannot walk well whether you're on a crutch or you're on a wheelchair stand up now in the name of jesus any pain around your limbs in the name of jesus if you're on crutches i release the power of god be healed right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone who has struggled with pile please hold on this is a very severe case of pile very severe case of pile the power of god is coming on you you will know you are healed because the pain leaves you now the pain leaves you now in the name of jesus christ um i don't know what medical condition is it that prohibits eating starch but i'm seeing someone your a doctor was warning you to not eat starch because of a medical condition you have the power of god i don't know who that person is but the power of god is touching you right now now for sake of time whether or not i mention your case from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now my sister that lady waving her hands i'm seeing the power of god come on your stomach there is something that is going out right now i decree and declare i stretch my hands towards you let that devil leave you now in the name of jesus christ 
now very quickly some of you even whilst you were under the anointing something happened to you i want you to check yourself we have just two minutes i don't want to abuse the time we need to shame the devil here at house on the rock the refuge are we together wherever you are check yourself the moment you find out that you could do something you couldn't do please be very bold i like you to use either this place or that place celebrate them people are coming out if i can have just one or two of the pastors or just just someone so we take one or two testimonies check your vision check everything is this how you celebrate miracles my god is this how you celebrate miracles keep coming check yourself check yourself check yourself don't sit back and hold on those of you watching and following online miracles are also happening in your homes your offices wherever you are i want you to, you can call in you can send through whatever platform the emails that may be displayed let the house on the rock here the refuge know that jesus is touching you right where you are in the name of jesus yes sir just a few hold on oh, ju ju just a moment okay hello apostle yes, sir. Uh, when you talked about the fire one of the reasons one of the, the the reasons why i'm in this service i'm not a member of the church but one of the reasons was because of this pile matter i even came with the drugs i've been taking where it. is the drug see, oh i see I'm taking it it's inside it's inside my back what happened to you now it's gone maybe you said the pain then it's gone <laughs> We have another miracle here, yes, sir. Please. Very quickly, my God. Just, just, we're not going to stay here for too long. Go please ahead. Just be patient. Yes, go ahead. Coming to church, I had a sore throat. I don't know. I was not breathing well, but now my throat. Oh, the lady that was running out. Check it now. Yes. Any pain? It's gone. Sir. Completely gone. It never returns to you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, I'm a medical doctor and my job entails that I stand a lot in theaters, doing ward rounds. So I've been feeling this pain on my right toe and the feet. I keep telling myself that I'm going to see an orthopedic surgeon, but I never had the time to see one. Today, the pain becomes, became so intense during the ward round that I had to take, I had to sit down and stop work. But of course, I had to stand up and continue work. So yes. During the prayer, I was standing and there was a lot of pain, but I kept standing. So what happens? And I just want to bless the name of the Lord. And right Check yourself. now, the pain is no longer Check. there. Any pain? The Completely gone. You Check yourself. Gone. It never returns to you again in Jesus' name. Is that yes, please? Hold on. Yours, um, blood vision. Blood so vision. A uh, blood vision, like. I can't How long? see this. What's your name, my dear? Happiness. Happiness. Yes, sir. How long? Um, going to eight, nine years now. What couldn't you read when you came? Um, the screen. Oh, I can't really see your face clearly. I was using glasses. You were using glasses? Yes. Where are the glasses? I can't find it when I fell down. I don't know whether somebody... And right now you can see? Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Yes. We have another miracle here, Apostle. Yes. To thank God because I was having blood vision. You were God. having blood vision. Yes, and immediately the man of God prayed the blood vision seed. Secondly, I want to thank God because He manifested the spot in my life in a different dimension today. I bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Praise the Lord. I've been having shoulder pain for several months now, and when the man of God prayed, the shoulder pain just left. Check yourself. Any pain completely gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you by the power of Praise the Holy the Spirit. Praise the Lord. My name is Philip. I actually came here with a severe neck, new problem, pain. I was supposed to see, go to Cedar Crest tomorrow. That's my appointment tomorrow. But while the prayer was going on, something hit me serious time. My God. Check yourself. Any I'm pain? Healed, sir. Supernatural healing in the name of Jesus. I work in a hospital too, so I do a lot of standing. Are you seeing what God is doing to the medical people? So I, I've been having this pain from my neck, shoulder, and to this part of my body, but right now I can't feel it. Before now, I can't even bend down. And I've been doing physiotherapy for like three weeks now, but 
I don't feel any pain. Completely bend down. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain. Completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Um, I was having this shoulder pain and ankle, so we are about to travel soon to check for trials like football. So you are a footballer. Yes, sir. So last week Friday, I went to training. Then I got ankle, then my shoulder. But now, after the prayers, I'm feeling normal. Check yourself. Hallelujah. May the Lord prosper you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe one or two yes, more and then we're done. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. While I was there, I felt a very sharp pain in my tummy. And the moment I fell under the anointing, that was all. That was the end. What happened to you? The pain what? ceased. The pain ceased. Oh, you had a pain before yeah. now? No, it was while I was there. It was, was while you were there? Yes. It just the left. The moment I fell under the anointing, it disappeared. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed now you are healed forever let's have the last one i know there are many more what will happen is you can you can testify uh, uh, during the other sessions yes i've had ringing in my ears for over three years now and then i can't hear anything anymore and then the ringing has stopped there's no ringing in my ear anymore you believe what has yes i had pain in my knee coming to church this evening and i can't feel the pain completely anymore. gone in the name of jesus christ well let's just honor that sister and praise and, the lord yes when you mentioned waist pain that you can even feel the pain i was there i've had this pain since last week if i sit down to stand up will be an issue i will fall back to the chair but when you mentioned the issue i've been checking myself because the pain is no longer there completely. Please stand on your feet. I'm no longer slave to me. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to me. I speak over your life you are in this place and haven't heard about Jesus and what he can do haven't seen what he has done you are here and you are saying apostle I know that I need Jesus I need to make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle I remember giving everything to Jesus but for some reason my life has gone haywire and I need restoration I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. You have just a minute. I'd like you to leave your seat. Please, um, before we receive the final prophetic word, wherever you are, please leave your seat boldly. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I'd like you to come and stand here very quickly. I'll count one to five. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand before Jesus here. One. Run to Jesus. Two. Don't allow anybody to leave you behind. Run. Come to Jesus. He's giving you a new beginning. You don't have to kneel. Please stand for space. Please stand for space. Three. Someone is coming to Jesus here at this conference. He's giving you a new beginning. A new beginning. If you're still running, come. Come. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. I salute every one of you. Thank you for the courage to come. Jesus said, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I request that you lift your right hand very high above your head. Please say this after me. Say it with faith, believing that Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word that you are all powerful. I believe in your power to save I believe in your power to give me a new beginning I confess Jesus as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace 
even the gift of righteousness and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep those hands father we thank you for these ones you have brought them to yourself may the grace that keeps may that grace keep them i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit may you be grounded and established in righteousness in the name of jesus now you would notice that you were given a card please look up you were given a card by the officials here's what i want you to do um as they direct you you'll be told what to do okay i thought you would feel it here so please all of you to my left which is your right i like you to go let's celebrate them as they go you'll meet with a few counselors and you will be back to your seat hallelujah can i speak finally over your life please stand thank you for your patience thank you for your patience let me encourage you to be actively involved in the remaining sessions there's tomorrow morning there's tomorrow evening there's um saturday morning and then the celebration service do well to stretch through remember this is a week for you of spiritual emphasis and do well to enjoy the worship the word connect with your heart opened and the lord will bless you in jesus name i decree and declare over your life in the name that is above all names the level of grace and anointing that you require for the next season may that grace rest on you now in the name of jesus christ every closed door over your life and your destiny i speak over that door and i decree and declare let it be open now i decree and declare that in this season you encounter the ministry of destiny help us men and women raised by god to hold your hand and lift you in the name of jesus christ and i declare that for everything that has left you that should not have left you wherever it is i call it by prophecy back to your life in the mighty name of jesus i speak over everyone under the sound of my voice you will finish this year well hear me everyone here present in this place by this time next year you will still be alive rejoicing here the only difference is that you will be at least 10 times better than you are now in the name of jesus christ and i pray for everyone who is part of the house on the rock family especially the refuge here all who have contributed to making this conference so far nor sworn deceitfully the bible says he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of salvation and he said this is the generation of them and seek thy face O Jacob Lord we thank you thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head come on professor Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for above lifting. every challenge. Thank you for lifting. Above every failure. He's lifting you tonight. Thank you for lifting. 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 I like you to see yourself rising Thank you for above every challenge, Thank you for above every situation. Thank you for I don't Thank care you for what problem it is that you came here with. Seek it tonight, lift it your body. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Above every failure. Thank you for lifting. Above every sickness. Thank you for Above every limitation. You are in the presence of Yeshua Hamashiach. Thank you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. For thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory. You're the lifter up of my head. 
Come on, celebrate him. Come on, celebrate him with a clap and a shout of victory. The Bible says a shout of joy and victory. Come on, shout. Come on, shout. It's a shout of victory. It's a clap of victory. The shout of joy and victory will not be back from the tents of the righteous. Father, tonight we declare that you alone are Lord in this place. You are the only one who deserves to be exalted. No flesh takes your glory tonight. We are totally helpless without you. Except by your spirit we can do nothing. We are not ashamed to declare that we are helpless without you. And except you strengthen us tonight, we are unable to help ourselves. Lord, let the communication of your spirit be effectual in us tonight. Let your word come like fire in our spirits. And Lord, with your word, let there be grace to walk in obedience. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Friends, there's something about the presence of God. Every time you come into an atmosphere of God's presence, I'd like you to know that when the portals of heaven are opened, there are several things that happen the impartations of the spirit the communication of the wisdom of the spirit now a lot of the things that happen to believers in the presence of God are so supernatural that it takes for you to be spiritual to be able to acclimatize yourself to the atmosphere of the glory because the Bible says the natural man of this people is mighty there are three dimensions of God's presence taught in scripture the first dimension of his presence is what the bible calls his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence where can i hide from your presence he is suffering he began the beginning the bible says his eyes runs through and fro searching the entire earth and so when you talk of the omnipresence of God it's his ability to be everywhere at the same time when Adam sinned in the garden the Bible says they went and they hid and in Genesis chapter 3 the Bible says and they had the voice of God the Hebrew word says they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou and adam said i heard thy voice and i hid because i was naked where can i hide from your presence and that's the reason why the bible says how that he has the ability not only to scan his eyes around the world but to scan the hearts of men and judge the intents of the hearts of men. He is omnipresent. It's an ability that is exclusively for the God class. His ability to be everywhere. That's the reason why all believers all over the world can lift up their voice to God for help. And at the very same time, he's able to respond to their needs. He's able to relate with you. While he's there with you in the room, he's there on a crusade ground. He's there helping a woman to deliver safely. He's there helping somebody out of accident. He's omnipresent. Listen, sometimes we need to know the qualities of God to help us worship him. 
because a lot of times we think he's like one of us but when we understand that although we are part takers of his divine nature we didn't give him the nature he's he brought us into a participation of his nature but then there are certain dimensions of his nature that has not been given to us to participate that's the dimension that makes him god one of it is his omnipresence no man has in himself the ability to be everywhere at the same time even satan does not have that ability in the book of job chapter one the bible says the sons of god gathered and satan was in their midst and god asked him from whence and he said from running to and fro he was at a specific location but god is in this place and all over the world where true believers are gathered in the name of jesus christ he's there in their midst his omnipresence the second dimension of him is what i call his emmanuel dimension the bible says where two or three are gathered in his name he says he's there emmanuel means god in the midst of his people god with us his ability that every time we gather in the name of Jesus, we are confident that he's there in our midst. That's the dimension of him that gives us confidence to agree with one another and pray and say, Lord, we commit this issue and that issue and we are sure that he's in our midst. Listen, you need to learn to look at God not just as a king seated far in some galaxies you need to realize that you are before the throne I like that beautiful song so we bow as we enter the throne room and we do what You are worthy, thou art holy, there is none like you in your presence, that is where I must be. Very powerful song. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. If you couldn't come, the Bible will not ask you to come. So we have the ability to be in the throne room. We have the ability to be with him where he is. Otherwise, there's no point talking about koinonia. Many of us see God high up there. And sometimes we come out of our rooms and say, God, I hope you can hear me. But you need to realize that he's, how did Darling Jack put it? So close, I believe you're holding me now in your hands. You, you never let me go he's so close he's not just far up there so his Emmanuel dimension begins to give you the consciousness that he's not only alive and around but he's with you the Bible calls him our ever present help in time of need the one who sticks closer than even a brother the third dimension of his presence is called his Shekinah his manifested presence where not only is he in the midst of his people but there is an awareness of your spirit your soul and your body the environment animate and inanimate things realize that their maker is in their midst and you are engulfed in the glory and in his presence and that's what causes the shaking the falling down and all of the supernatural manifestations the bible says when that dimension happens it says the mountains keep like lambs the awe and the majesty of his presence when israel complained and said is it only moses that god will speak to he said all right sanctify yourselves i want to show you a sample of what my shekinah looks like the bible says when he showed up and they heard his voice together they said no just speak to moses anything you tell him we will do the presence of god is not only majestic it's fearful fearful and 
that's the dimension from where miracles are released that's the dimension from where healings are released that's the dimension from where impartations are released so you sit under that atmosphere of shekina and you step out in a realm of glory suddenly you begin to see that there is an overflow of his life and glory in your life there is beauty that emanates from your life that's why we spend time in worship because we want to allow not only our spirits but our souls and our mortal bodies to interact with that atmosphere of his shekinah and suddenly you find out that tumors disappear growths disappear because everything that symbolizes death is always swallowed up in victory hallelujah praise the lord and so i'd like you to always have that consciousness that every time we come before god's presence every time we come before god's presence our hearts must be opened to just soak in that atmosphere of his glory realize that you're not just singing you're not just helping the worshipers but you are standing in the presence of god from where the life of that river the life of that glory rubs up upon your life and when you step out see let me tell you something you will not realize how changed you are in god's presence until you step back in the midst of the darkness and then you see how much illumination comes out from your spirit you find out that suddenly certain vocabularies just edit themselves out of your life you don't know when that transition happened it happened in the glory certain decisions certain decisions and resolutions are crystallized in your spirit you begin to make up your mind the grace to walk in certain realms is imparted in his presence that's why we gather here hallelujah so lord we thank you for the gift of your presence we really thank you for your presence and tonight as we behold you let us be changed into that which we are beholding the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of God. We are changed from one dimension of glory. And so let us be changed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans. I'll just talk very briefly. of Romans the Lord is seeking men and women who will carry the life the power the glory of the kingdom and permeates the systems of the world this has been his singular message and let me tell you something about God when God calls him and the Bible says that is Jesus Christ saw different kinds of people scattered around and he called them come follow me he called Nathaniel he called Peter he called the disciples when God calls a man he doesn't send the man immediately he calls you then the next thing is that he makes you he said come and I will make you and for three and a half years by the teaching of his word by the experience of the miraculous things he did he made them and then the Bible says he sent them at a certain time the 12 to go and test run the things that he was imparting in them the bible says they came back rejoicing then he sent them alongside 70 others and the bible says they came to him rejoicing they said even the devils were subject to us in thy name 
but even at that dimension they were still in the making process listen it pays to stay in the school of the spirit sometimes you see the caliber of people that God is raising here I, I have the privilege of knowing a lot of us here and I know the dimensions that we are functioning in the spirit terrible realms in the spirit yet the Lord is still subjecting us to the making process because when he's done with us and he sends us out we will be absolute wonders to our generation that's what he's doing he said he that bears fruit I will prune, sharpen refire that he may bear much fruit that's what God is doing so when God calls a man he makes him some of you may be wondering Lord with this level of anointing you have still not sent me and God says sit down you need more than you have now to touch your generation this may be sufficient to touch Samaru but not the nations this may be sufficient to touch Zaria but not the nations this may be sufficient to touch Nigeria but not the nations Bible says who through faith subdued kingdoms every time God keeps reminding me that I'm still in the making process I tell people if you think you've seen anything about my life this is only the beginning because I'm still in the baking room of the spirit that's why you see when you are conscious of being made no level of glory will carry your it will, will enter your head such that you lose out on the remaining training after doing terrible things in righteousness you go back to the secret place but a day will come when the master will tap you and say this is my beloved son and he will command the world to hear you when he makes that decree the doors of nations become open out of their own volition no you become an infant of fire nobody will be able to stop you hallelujah romans chapter 8 verse 18 for i reckon oh by the way i i decided to suspend we're taking a series on the ancient parts how many of you were blessed last week hallelujah but i decided to just fold that series and keep it aside until we're in full strength because it's a very critical teaching that i want everybody to be part of hallelujah and so i just decided to wrap it and keep it ancient secrets we began by examining jeremiah chapter 6 he said ask for the ancient parts and walk in it and we spoke last week about the anointing i wanted to complete the series is a long series it will take us at least four weeks to explore some of the things and so i just decided to keep it until we have all our other members around so that we can flow together hallelujah so tonight i'm going to be teaching very briefly on the pathway to sonship the pathway to sonship the pathway to sonship i trust that the lord will grant us grace you would have noticed that here we don't just teach results we teach the process because when you understand the process and the principles then the results are inevitable hallelujah the pathway to sonship romans chapter 8 verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 for the earnest expectation of creation wasted for the manifestations of the sons of god for the creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god 22 for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also who have the first fruits of the spirit 
even ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of our body look up I want to share with us very briefly on the process the making of a son now there are many Greek words that were used in scripture to connote uh, sons many of them but there are two interesting ones I want to teach on the first is called technon and the second is called wheels technon and wheels two powerful words hallelujah now I like you to understand that when you give birth to a child please watch this when you give birth to a child that child comes with um, a thinking process and a mindset that does not permit him to do a lot of things in that environment hallelujah and over time as the child begins to watch other people elderly people and as he begins to interact with his environment certain things begin to become evident in the child's life when he's always lying down and he watches people walking one day he will attempt to begin to do what they are doing are you following me now and then he begins to try to talk then he begins to try to reason and over time there is a metamorphosis in that child from complete childhood he becomes a teenager and then uh, an adolescent and then an adult and so on and so forth that's the way it is in the spirit and we are in their need of sons we have a lot of children in the body and there is need for men the bible says that god desires to bring many into sonship now sonship is not just the issue of confessing and saying i'm a son i receive it you don't receive sonship by impartation it's a door it's a process it's a making just like how many of you have seen little children who try to behave like adults you just see a little child and then he he takes with one and tries to gum it around his face in an attempt to look like an adult does that make him an adult that very act proves that he's still a child hallelujah and so we have a lot of believers who camouflage as sons i need you to know tonight that sonship is not just about confession you don't just receive sonship i know that many of you will say ah the bible says to them that believe in him he gave you the right to be called sons of god i'm going to explain something to you a lot of translations in especially in the old king james certain words were interchanged two of them was weos and technon technon talks of a child a baby one who is has inadequate knowledge and education and information one who is not able to do a lot of things and then we are stocks of one who by reason of knowledge has attained the same status with his father so there is an interplay of those words in scripture and many of them have been interpreted sons sons are you following me now when you get born again when you accept jesus christ into your life the first thing that happens is that there is a translation i've always used this let me use two people i like being very graphic please aaron come sir come just one here one here hallelujah now this is the world system this is the kingdom where satan is lord a system that was built by cain the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. And the Bible says that all kinds of rebellious things happen in that city. A city that did not recognize and work with the government of God. Hallelujah. And so, we are born with this system. We live here. There is a law in this realm. It's called the law of sin and death. That's the law that is responsible for greed and wickedness. And oppression and selfishness. The spirit of the power of the air that walks in the sons of disobedience and so we are all born in this realm but every time we accept that Jesus is Lord of our lives there is a translation you need to understand this you know you may not feel anything happen to you how be it in the spirit there is a translation from this kingdom the kingdom of darkness 
into the kingdom of light the kingdom of God's dear son hallelujah but now what we do not realize is that when you are born again that initial experience affects only your spirit are you following me this is where a lot of people miss out let me give you a scriptural proof when Israel came out of Egypt that's a type of our coming out are you following me now when Israel came out of Egypt it was a type of our coming out but there needed to be a separation are you following me what the Red Sea did was it caused a permanent separation between Egypt and Israel and they sang they said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders the systems have been thrown into the sea so many believers what they do is they just come out of Egypt and stop and then later on they find out that Pharaoh is still looking for them the first step to get to the promised land is to come out of Egypt but that's not the only step the second step is that there must be a passing through the sea the Bible says that we'll be washed by the the regenerating of the water there is an experience of passing through the water in the spirit and that's what causes the Bible says, except you be born of water and of the spirit he said you cannot enter the kingdom of God so it's one thing to see the kingdom he was speaking to Nicodemus you can see the kingdom when you step out of Egypt but it takes a washing of the water and of the spirit for you to experientially begin to enter the realities of the things of the spirit there are so many believers that see the kingdom they can describe what it looks like but it takes the interaction of the water so that we begin to step into the reality of it so there is a translation when you come into this realm the ministry of the holy spirit changes in your life because he that told his ministry would because as a non-believer his ministry is to convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment now when you become a believer and he comes to live inside you his ministry changes he begins to be unto you an advocate a teacher a strengthener a guide a standby an intercessor he begins to bring the reality of the revelation of the word into your spirit and he begins to teach you the principles of this kingdom as he teaches you the principles of the kingdom grace is imparted upon you to begin to walk experientially in that reality hallelujah and so I like you to know that it is true that in Christ we are all sons but it takes the revelation there is a making that brings you into an experiential position of sonship so there are many of us that look like sons but in reality we are not experiencing the benefits and the blessings that follow sons the Bible says an heir as long as he's a child Galatians 4 differ it not from a slave although that child is royalty but because he must be made there is a process that makes him in the process of the making of that child they teach him the attitude of royalty they teach him how to speak like royalty they teach him how to walk like royalty they teach him how to respond to situations like royalty and over time when he is, has been tried and proven then certain riches of that kingdom is now committed to him hear me friends there are certain realities in the spirit that only sons can touch no matter how you shout there will keep being a call upon your spirit man to step up into the reality of sonship hallelujah bringing many sons into glory and so the Holy Spirit begins to walk upon your mind the Holy Spirit begins to teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hear me. The major work of a believer, of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is to change his mind. Now, don't 
take this for granted the major work of the holy ghost um some years ago when whenever i read this scripture is anything too hard for me to do how many of you have read that scripture the the thing that bothers me about that scripture is the word too why will god who is almighty say is there anything too hard why is it too hard and one day i asked the holy spirit i said what's the mystery behind this too hard that god is saying and god says the reason why it seems to be too hard is that i have to keep getting you until you come into alignment with me and that's the difficult part of the process because i am always able but sometimes it takes years for him to begin to touch you until you come to a point where you are in synchrony with heaven and then at that point the realities of the things of heaven can begin to flow into your life the primary challenge of believers is that we are yet to synchronize our minds there is there is need for a synchrony with the things of heaven such that it always will be done on earth as it is done in heaven our inability to synchronize our lives and our minds with the principles by which heaven is governed listen the same principle god is trying to give you here on earth many of them are the same principles that govern heaven love the fruit of the spirit that's the principle that governs heaven and because everyone in heaven there is perfect synchrony to those principles so heaven is the way it is so why is the earth this way because the sons who have been given the ability to rule the earth have not yet allowed themselves to come into synchrony and any life that will painstakingly push himself to that point suddenly begins to experience heaven within that environment that's the reason why you can see two people living in the same environment and one is walking in the reality of heaven's life and the other is walking in another reality because the other one has made himself synchronized your mind the bible says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed be ye changed by the renewing of your mind every day of my life I keep seeing again and again that the singular secret for victory in this life is when a man can stand in synchrony with God you will become an awesome wonder any man you see today who has manifested certain levels of the anointing or certain levels of notable impact has brought himself by the activity of the spirit to that point where the laws of God becomes the laws that your life is governed by there is perfect synchrony at that point heaven finds expression in your life and in your atmosphere and so from being a child the Holy Ghost begins to walk on their minds the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the activities of the Spirit the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the mindset that the Word of God brings suddenly you begin to find out that over your finances there is a principle it's not magic it's not mistake it's not God liking some people and hating some people suddenly you begin to find out from the word that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty suddenly you realize that when you bring in all your tithes into the storehouse the heavens are open over you and the devourer is rebuked suddenly you understand that he that soweth sparingly will reap sparingly and he that soweth bountifully will reap bountifully as the holy ghost begins to bring you now it's not a it's not one day's job because when the holy spirit brings to your mind the principles of the kingdom the flesh in you will wrestle it because it knows that it will no longer hold the place of authority when the laws of god come into place and so it is a price 
because that will mean dropping greed for instance dropping selfishness helping men not being weary in well doing and it takes the grace of God but the beautiful thing is that as the Holy Ghost shows you the laws he stands by you to ensure that you enforce it then the Holy Ghost begins to teach you about your health he tells you that there is a system in the kingdom that can keep you free of sickness and it looks impossible until you painstakingly cooperate with him then you come to a point where you begin to understand the activity of the spirit in your body that if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in this mortal body, not just in your spirit, that there is a divine ability, there is an energizing that he causes. It's like a drug. He sends it all over your body and there is a quickening. Now it takes a while because even while you are reading that scripture, the devil will bring every kind of thing your body will refuse to cooperate and paul said i keep my body under subjection in other words you say body you are not above me this law must you must bend till you cooperate with this principle then jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 comes to play he watches over his word he's alert and active waiting for your obedience so that you'll be committed to a performance see a time will come in life when when certain realities of the kingdom have not entered you you will die for many of us who like running for ministry ministry a time will come you will minister like this and you know that if you do not understand the quickening ministry of the holy spirit you will drop dead one day on stage because a time can come you will have ministrations all through the week and there are several things you have to attend to but when you understand that there is the quickening of the spirit there is no there's nothing like breakdown no it's supernatural they see an ordinary man but there is another law walking in your members the pathway to sonship where the word of god begins to paint your new reality your reality begins to be framed by the word of god and then you understand that you have been raised up with Christ. That when he died, not only did he die for you, but you died in him. That when he was buried, you were buried in him. That when he defeated Satan, when these brothers were in him by covenant, defeating Satan. And when he rose again, the Bible says he raised us up and made us to sit with him in heavenly places far above the witches in every village far above principalities and powers and every name that is named when that reality begins to enter your spirit it may take a while but when that happens there will be a signal in the realm of the spirit and every devil will know that this light has entered your spirit at that point there will be nothing of Satan in you and you can stand and then that scripture will now become a reality that in my name they shall cast out devils you enter an atmosphere that threatens hell jesus walked upon the earth and showed us an example of sonship when he stepped into an environment the demons suddenly began to operate we went for a crusade after um last week week before last we went for a meeting somewhere in southern Kaduna and as they just checked on us into the hotel we just lay down and I decided to take some rest as soon as I just put my head suddenly I sensed a very evil presence and suddenly I just turned and there was a demon standing before me he said what have you come to do here I shared with them that's what he told me he said what have you come to do here listen when you become a son when your feet steps into a territory there is a ripple effect in that territory they know that something has happened that's why you see the devil tries to fight some meetings there are some meetings he doesn't bother he even helps to plan it for them because it makes no relevance whatsoever but then there are some meetings that shake hell to its foundation and if the devil begins to beat left right and center because it's the manifestation of sons 
men and women who understand the laws of the spirit men and women and, and women who have mastered the art of bringing their bodies and their minds in alignment to cooperate with the holy spirit so they can stand and make decrees and command nations to be open and the gates of nations will swing open so how are sons made simple very simple there's no complication about it the difference between a child and a son is knowledge understanding and obedience the difference between a child it says when i was a child first um, corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 when i was a child i thought like a child i understood like a child i acted like a child he said now that i'm a man i laid aside these childish things the difference between a child and a son technon and wheels is that transition in the spirit the lord begins to walk the first thing is knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the bible says my people are destroyed my people are destroyed my people are destroyed not because satan is powerful until you understand these realities in the spirit satan will keep looking like a mountain i refuse to see him as a mountain hallelujah it's the pathway to sonship you come to a point where there is sufficient knowledge the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 3 i believe it says according as his divine power have given us all things not some all things that pertain unto life and godliness how through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us this exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped this corruption through lust and so the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom is what we need first of all are you following me say after me knowledge knowledge say one more time knowledge that's what we need that's why you hear people like pastor chris say all you ever need is wrapped up in the word he says go for the word go for it is the truth go for the word we go for many things all kinds of things what we need is to stay with the word to stay with the word when the illumination of the word arises in your spirit it sets you up it brings you into sonship the activity of the word of God upon your spirit and upon your mind and upon your body is what brings you into sonship knowledge the second is understanding the Bible says with all you're getting get understanding I shared it um, in a, God bless you sir I shared it in a Sunday meeting but then I'll share it again I want to tell you the difference between knowledge and understanding and I want to use a very practical example it's believed that we guys don't know how to cook very well praise the Lord now it's not like we don't know how to cook we know we don't understand how to cook you, you get it now because the same ingredients the ladies are using that's what we are using why are the results different they know when to put what the, are you following me now the guys for instance jollof rice if i tell you give me a quick tip on making jollof rice that's very easy hot water rice comes in add oil add uh, uh, crayfish add whatever you have left close it trust god to do the rest now and it has produced some results in our lives because we have been able to eat the food are you following me now but when when a lady is cooking because by experience she has not only been taught what to do but how to do it she knows that okay after five minutes you add this you have finished adding your own since she has not added her own there are certain things that they add only five minutes when the food is about to be done and then the same ingredients two of you went to the market and then you leave your food and eat out that's the difference between knowledge and understanding are you
you following me now knowledge is just acquiring the information knowing that these are the things to be done but understanding gives you the steps it tells you that when you get to this point knowledge says tight and be blessed understanding says this is the attitude this is how you tight are you following me now knowledge says give understanding says this is how you give knowledge says the just shall live by faith understanding says this is the dynamics of faith you hear the word you believe you step out are you following me now so what we need is not just knowledge many believers have knowledge rema 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 that has not translated into anything we have a lot of rema but what we lack is understanding so in proverbs he said with all you're getting don't just know that this is what needs to be done you must understand how it should be done that's why some people walk through some situations as if satan does not exist and yet others are still in that situation are you getting blessed understanding the understanding of the word there are several people that have thought about faith there are several people that have taught so many things about faith but there are few people that understand how faith works and it's those who understand and apply it that get the results it's one thing to say i live by faith hallelujah in the name of jesus i live by faith that's just step one but because we do not understand the operation of faith what the bible calls the spirit of faith so the making of a son is that there is a translation the word of god begins to walk in you children begin to live and manifest the character of egypt although they are out of egypt you still begin to see bitterness envy and all of these things and the holy ghost begins to walk in you remember our prayer last week we prayed about the heart condition god begins to attack your heart thoroughly until he brings out everything that does not line up with his principles then you find out that your heart is pure towards god and then you begin to experience certain riches of the kingdom the making of sons so i like for you to know that you don't just receive sonship as an impartation if it were so nobody would still be pressing towards the deep things of the spirit again because as long as we give our lives to christ we become sons but hear me friends it takes a while and the pathway for sonship is that you realize that although you are a child of god you are technon the word of god the understanding of his principles the knowledge the understanding and then the obedience the bible says they had the word like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith obedience you must be diligent and obedient you must be diligent and obedient hear me friends your obedience until you have been hammering on this issue of obedience if your obedience is not complete you will never step into the reality of sonship sons are those who have learned how to obey jesus said my meat is to do and finish the will of him that has sent me even at gethsemane he said father if it be thy will take this cup of me but he said nevertheless not my will sons have come to a point where they are resolutely obedient even unto death even unto death an heir as long as he's a child friends koinonia is an avenue for us to step up into the reality of sonship enough of this oppression by demons we come shout in tongues sing and dance and then we go back and we are badly oppressed by satan oppressed by sickness oppressed by failure that's the reason why our light unbelievers cannot understand what we are shouting about because the same things that keep them down are the same things that keep us down the same limitation they have is the same limitations we have and so they truly cannot see any difference but when we step into sonship they begin to see something different about our lives that when they break down there is supernatural strength for you to move forward 
that when they are communicating with the wisdom of men you come with the wisdom of God there's something about your life that attracts them I told God I said Lord I'm tired of reading about sonship I want to walk in the reality of it where everything about my life is a message that reflects Christ and so the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 it says the earnest expectation of creation are waiting for not everybody you know we always jump around and say my generation is waiting you better find out whether your generation is waiting for you or you are the one who is waiting for a savior the Bible says the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for what the manifestation of these sets of people these people who are not only born again but are full of the word men who know the word men who understand the word and men who have committed their lives to obey the principles of the word men who understand the place of intimacy with the holy spirit men who understand the laws of the anointing they understand how to bring the atmosphere of heaven into the lives of people at that point you become a blessing listen you cannot help anybody if you are like them you can't help the poor by being one you can't help the sick by being one you can't help the oppressed by being one. It is only when you are out of a system that you can help those in that system. You can't help a depressed person when you are depressed. You can you have to come out. That's why the Bible says, Come out from the among them and be ye separate. Hallelujah. And the Lord desires for us to step into sonship the bible says that there is a bondage of corruption upon our generation and it says only the sons only these sets of people they may not be many the great man of god calls them the remnants they may not be many how be it they are the ones who have refused to bow to the gods of the land they are the ones who have refused to bow to the systems they are the ones who have refused to bow to the golden image and they have said lord i will stay i will stay in the secret place i will allow myself to be built sons even when men are calling you great man of god you thank them with one hand and with the other hand you open the door to your secret place and rush back and say lord i know i'm great but maybe not great enough yet huh. and you stay in the secret place and there is an incubation of the spirit and sometimes people look at you and wonder they say what are you still looking for what do you want to become you want to be disappearing from one place to another if it's a requirement to shake your generation then it's relevant to stay until you have it listen when you stay and you are prepared I tell you the truth when you step out you will not be ashamed I told God something I said Lord never let me step out of a boundary you have not opened for me keep me draw my ears do anything you do to keep me there but when the door is open never let me stay push me till i go out the lord is making us here friends there is a making of sons this word if you are a believer this must become your active partner the bible is not i'm not just talking of uh, inspiring women or um what's the name every day with jesus or rhapsody of realities or whatever it is there is a place for those devotionals but i tell you the truth you need more than it satan is doing more than devotional you must prepare because kingdoms there will be a clash of kingdoms and hear me friends satan is not folding his arms look at the people in the world they are becoming more spiritual by the day they used to hide it before but now it's not hidden again businessmen are not hiding the issue of being spiritual again and god is sending you to the business world and all you think is read books about finance you better take this and let it be your friend Instead of buying Timbaland, buy a concordance. It 
to teach you the principle to own one of the company if you want to listen friends the difference between successful people and failures is that successful people delay their gratification now and get the things that are buy the truth he didn't say rent it buy it a lot of us like i will buy the truth buy tapes buy books sit with the world for those of us who are students you finish your exam sit with the world sit with the word this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest be careful to observe all that is written therein he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and thou shalt have good success stay with the word write a list of the areas where things are not working accept responsibility and say lord my faith is not working i'm tired of lying faith part of your study what again you can't pray for people to be filled with the holy spirit say i'm tired i need to know the principles write it and stay the trouble with many believers is that our spiritual growth is not constructive we are not growing constructively so when you say you have grown we ask okay try to honestly tell us what are the parameters to prove that you have grown you say now I, I was i was an usher now i'm the chief usher no it's not necessarily true it's not necessarily true there are certain realities in the spirit it's not pride there are some things that you shouldn't be struggling with at certain levels it's not pride that's the proof of growth imagine at this level of your life you're still trying to walk what do we call you you need a miracle imagine at this level of your life you are still trying to wear your clothes you don't know whether to put the, your shoe right or left are you following me how many of you have worn your shoe and say ah, ah i was able to really wear it well today no that's how it is in the spirit there are some things that should embarrass you back to the secret place you should get tired of some things and say lord i can't keep running from pillar to post at least if i'm not where i should be i shouldn't be where i was and you lock yourself and say i am let there be that transition there is a kind of dissatisfaction it's a holy one that draws a man to sonship and you get back and sit with the word and someone is a man of God are you around you tell him no I'm not around there are many of us that cannot switch our phone that's our spiritual limitation you look it looks as if your phone it will pinch you anything God gives you that you cannot lay aside for where you are going is an idol before you got the phone you were alive lock that phone and sit with the word of God get a rechargeable lantern or get whatever you get and play tape and sit down sometimes you play that tape while he's praying while he's playing you are praying in the spirit and soaking in that glory come on it won't be too long it won't be too long something about your life must leak there's no secret about it there is no secret about it your faith is not working stay with the word of god listen to the messages that you can get on faith sit down see i'm teaching you how to be sons because i must apologize to you but i, I think we were talking some time ago with the pastors at home and we we men of god have not really done justice to god's people because we have not paid the price to teach them the principles what's the use if i come and stand here and i say Stosin, stand up this guy stand up and i just say all right everybody watch this I just wave my hand and somebody falls how does that equip the people except you like i did last week trying to use it to demonstrate something are you following me see sons are not carried away by results when sons watch someone walking every time i watch men of god i'm really not looking at the results i'm finding out my spirit is scanning through what they are doing what lord did this guy touch in the spirit hallelujah what law is he touching in the spirit that's how sons think 
some of us say well god has not called me into ministry god has told me what my own call is i'll just be motivating people counsel people and so you feel there's no need the trouble is we have been made to think every time you give an unusual attention to the word ministry no no sir they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my saying do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life this is life and death my brother it has nothing to do with ministry we live in a world where until you are solidified by the word satan will eat you up and spit out your bones i've chosen to stay with the word i've chosen to i say it without apology at almost every time you come to my house you find us diligently studying students of the word nobody is carried away by ministry no students say a burden of ministry god didn't give me any burden god gave me a call people put yokes on themselves as a result of their negligence to abide by god's principles stay after me i go for the word it will make me a son when things are not happening see your finances are not working well why are you studying on relationship go and address an issue that is not working hallelujah sit down and address let me tell you something when an area begins to work in your spiritual life you are motivated to serve god better there's nothing as frustrating as every area not working in your life you just ask yourself oh, what what am i even doing if finances uh, if your finance is working and then the gift of the spirit is not working at least you are motivated one over two so you can press for the other one but where every area is a wilderness I'm trying to put something in your spirit this night that when you leave this place where somebody is distracting you from studying the word you know that is your enemy hallelujah some of you stay and when you want to study the word someone says ah we need to go and visit so 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 and so person and like ah it's been a while it's been a while sit with the word sit with the word that's the singular pathway to sonship Therefore, say after me, the pathway to sonship is to stay with the word, to know the word, to understand the word, and to obey the word. I have a guarantee for you. If you truly abide by these things I'm teaching you tonight, it will not be too long. I tell you the truth, your profiting will appear unto all in a way that will shock you. These are practical principles. Be a student of the word, I beg you. Day and night, sit with the word. Invest in books. Invest in materials. Some of the teachings that we have here, I think yesterday or so, in chapel, we're listening to the message last week. And I sat by there. I didn't say, I'm the one that preached it. I already knew. We sat quietly. And we're soaking into these things. That's why we give we give all the teachings from when koinonia started and and the ones we do in school is free very free all you need to do is just get it and sit with the word get other relevant teachings stay with the word if you're studying on faith concentrate on faith and get it be sure that you have gotten it then you can move to something else let your growth be constructive am i blessing you friends there are many of us that things are not moving you are just acting like things are working you know things are not working get tired stay in the presence you have prayed for over 200 people nobody has even recovered not even to get healed not even recovered don't just say well some people is like that god gives no begin to find out what is the spiritual principle that releases the anointing and then commit yourself to it 
this is what I know to be the pathway of sonship there are many things that we teach and they are equally important the place of your seed the place of service in the body and other things they are very important but the foundation the foundational pathway to sonship is to stay with the word of God know the word understand it understand it to, to understand you need the illumination of the spirit and then you also need to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise hallelujah how many of us truly want to step in the reality of sonship how many of us are trusting god to step up in certain areas of our lives there are some of us our families things are not working our families are in a mess who told you you cannot change it you can if you could not change it god will not bring you here he has brought you to let you know that you can do something about it we are going to pray so we'll round up and our prayer tonight is very simple lord i want to begin to see the reality of sonship work in my life i want to see the reality of sonship the reality please you see don't take for granted these things we are sharing they may look basic but they are powerful it's the foundation the word of god the word of god go ahead and cry say lord my life must make progress the holy ghost is in my life to bring beauty and glory go ahead and pray please make sure you are praying tonight god has committed something in our hands that will set us above the pathway to sonship is the path that stays with the word of god stays with the word of god understands god's principles is a sacrifice to bring your mind and your body under the influence of the word but when you do happy at thou because heaven becomes a reality in your life i don't care what the situation is in your life this is the solution tonight no matter how impossible it looks i have not seen a man that has given true diligence to the word the word of god will make you a son the word of god will make you a son the word of god will translate you from being a child to a son stay with the word brothers and sisters stay with the word it is life 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 the principles of the world are the principles by which heaven are designed to function by go ahead and pray and say lord grace grace i receive grace to be an ardent student of the world don't let the devil deceive you make sure you are praying grace to be an ardent student of the world go for knowledge go for knowledge go for knowledge it will place you above go for knowledge don't go for results go for knowledge the knowledge the understanding and obedience will give you every result go for knowledge not just results go for knowledge invest in the word invest in the word invest in books invest in tapes don't just buy them use them hallelujah hallelujah the second prayer point very quickly is we're going to say lord open me up to the understanding of your principles there are many of us that we have knowledge but what we lack is understanding 
we know what to do but we don't know how to do it lift up the voice and pray and say lord understanding understanding of your principles over my finances over my health over my life over my ministry over my business over my family make sure you are praying let's raise our voice tonight and pray understanding teach me how it is done not just what to do tell him lord teach me what buttons i need to press in the spirit what principles i need to keep teach me how it is done lord we receive understanding let there be a baptism of understanding a baptism of understanding Make a parianda caso pegadelegos. Understanding, 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 understanding. Hey, they are life to those who find them. It's a secret that will not fail. I assure you, it's a secret that will not fail. When you find it, you have found gold. When you found find it. You have found a treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. The last prayer point. We are going to pray for grace to be obedient. It's one thing to know. It's one thing to understand. There are many of us that know about tithing for instance. There are many of us that understand. But there are very few of us that have been consistent. The degree to which you have been consistent is the degree to which your finances have been. So, hear me. There are some issues you need to realize that there are some things in the spirit that even after you have prayed about them, until you obey the principles, you will never see the results. So, every time you are praying, God will be directing you in your prayer to the principles. While you are praying in tongues, God will show you visions of yourself obeying that word. Until you obey it, you will not see a performance. Go ahead and pray. Now, you are going to receive grace. Hear me? You know the area of your life that you need radical change. You need some things to change. You must get dissatisfied. If not, nothing will change about your life. Hallelujah. And so we are going to be praying. Mention the areas of your life. And say, Lord, grace to obey your word. My body will not be a limitation. Some of you will need to fast. Fasting will not kill you, friends. Fasting has not killed anybody who did it diligently and in accordance to God's principles. Some of you may need to go for a retreat away from people for a while some of you may need to switch off your phones for a while you will not die grace to obey in the area of my finances grace to obey your principles concerning my health grace to obey your principles concerning ministry grace to obey Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, we'll soon round up. I abide by your principles. Whether my mind likes it or not, I abide by your principles. Whether the body is ready to cooperate or not, by the grace and the power of the Holy Ghost, I bring my mind under subjection to your word. I bring my body under subjection. Body, you must cooperate with the word. Mind, you must cooperate with the word. Until my reality becomes heaven. Grace to obey. Grace to do consistent obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Not part obedience. Not partial obedience. Grace to obey the law of tithing. Grace to be 
obey the law of confessing the word speaking right prayer staying with God's word abstinence from every appearance of evil grace to obey hallelujah hallelujah Paul speaking to his son Timothy said meditate on these things he said give yourself wholly to them he said your profiting shall appear I give you a guarantee friends for as many of you who will take this thing serious I assure you that you will shock yourself it's not a prophecy it's the truth it will happen hallelujah father tonight we thank you in this place make us sons bring us into the position of sonship where your word becomes a reality in our lives bring us to that point where we become the living word active to our environment a revelation that god is alive a revelation that his kingdom is superior Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to round up now. It's our culture to close early and we'll try to keep the time. But hear me. As soon as you leave this place, tomorrow is election, come out and vote. And then if you can't go back and stay with the word of God. Some of you have some spare cash in your accounts. Go and buy an MP3 buy an ipod there is no spiritual investment you make that is a waste download messages download worship songs stay in the atmosphere of god's presence lock yourself in the room for one two or three straight hours praying in the spirit and there's worship playing all over no don't tell me you'll be ordinary not after that experience see the truth is we know what is required to make us great we have not just given priority to it. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.